Transportation has long been an important method in which people remain connected with each other. Throughout history, we have evolved transportation technology to become more efficient in energy and time. The discovery of animal husbandry led to horse-drawn carriages, and from there came the discovery of engines and trains and automobiles. In this video, we will be informing you about modern automobiles in regard to their two important components, their engines and transmission. So here is Jacob to explain what is going on under the hood. Hey there at home, I'm Jacob Roberts. This is my 2008 Mazda 3. The engine inside of it is a 2.3 liter 4 cylinder. So the important thing to know about engines is it's more than just a block of metal, right? This is our example. Engines are split into two halves. The bottom is the block, the top is the head. It's called the head because that's the, the brain of it all, the center of operations. Think of an engine as a big air compressor. Air comes in through here, the throttle body, comes in through the head, down these little tunnels, through these valves, and then here we get to the combustion chamber. Air comes in through here, fuel injectors up in the head squirt fuel in, and then this is where the magic happens. So, housed within the block is the crank. The crank has an arm and a piston that goes up and down within the combustion chamber. The piston will come up and compress this air-fuel mixture and then the spark plug, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, will ignite it. That energy pushes the piston back down, puts pressure on this arm, and in turn, turns the crank. Attached to that bad boy is a 5-speed transmission manual, I should add. So the important thing to understand with gears is that they're in sequence for a reason, one through five. One through three are your shorter get up and go gears. They're, ma they're more torque based, getting you from zero to 60 in the quickest amount of time. Four and five are more for maintaining your speeds keeping your engine at lower rotations for fuel economy and also for wear. So example, from a red light we'll be in first, we go until a mid RPM, we'll come down to second, again go to a mid RPM, come up to third, and then at this point we should be reaching near 40-50 miles per hour, and then it's fourth and fifth to maintain those speeds at moderate engine RPMs. So here we are at a red light, just turn green. Pay attention to the leftmost gauge, that's the tachometer, and what it does is measures the engine rotations I mentioned before, uh, rotations as in crank rotations. So in our shorter gears, we're going up to about 2,500, 3,000 RPM. Then we upshift into the next gears, two, three, four, beyond. And the idea is once we get to those cruising gears, which is where we're at now, now, <laughs> is to maintain low engine rotations. It uses less fuel and it's easier on the engine. Are you going? Well, I started when you... I didn't realize. Okay, I kind of cut it and then I went back. It's okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll edit this later. It stands for... Suck... Squeeze... I didn't spell that right, did I? You said that. Nope. I think it is. I don't yeah. know. I have no idea. Anyway, 